Experiment 14 in Chem 1211 is titled Immiscible Fluids, Rainbow in a Test Tube. The overarching goal of this experiment is to construct a chemical rainbow consisting of layers of immiscible fluids sitting one on top of the other, with each layer colored with a different dye compound forming a rainbow. To get to the rainbow stage, we need to appreciate and apply liquid miscibility and relative density. So we'll start with six unknown liquids and we'll perform miscibility tests to determine whether when mixed the pairs of liquids form one continuous layer or two distinct layers. We'll also look at which substance ends up on the bottom and the top of a two-layer or two-phase mixture to reason about relative density. Putting the information together from the miscibility and relative density tests, we'll be able to figure out which liquids will sit on the bottom and which liquids won't mix with one another when they're layered. We'll then be able to carefully layer the immiscible liquids from most dense to least dense, one on top of the other, forming a colored chemical rainbow. Let's begin with some background on the principles underlying the construction of the chemical rainbow. The first one I'd like to talk about is liquid miscibility. You can think of this term miscibility as the liquid-liquid version of the term solubility, whether two liquids can mix up to form one homogeneous phase or not. Let's consider a couple of different examples to see how we can reason about miscibility. So consider water and hexane. Water is pretty obviously a polar molecule. It contains polar OH bonds and a dipole moment pointing towards the oxygen atom. Hexane, on the other hand, is a nonpolar molecule consisting of, for the most part, nonpolar CH and CC bonds. If we were to mix these two together, we would end up with a two-phase or two-layered mixture in which hexane sits on the top and water on the bottom. So the mixture separates spontaneously into two layers. Even if we mix up the components very well initially, they'll spontaneously separate. Because the two liquids don't mix up to form a single homogeneous liquid-liquid solution, they're called immiscible, unable to mix with one another. Let's consider a second situation in which we again start with polar water, and to that we add polar methanol. Methanol is a polar molecule with a dipole moment pointing again towards the oxygen atom. When we mix these two together, we do in fact end up with one single homogeneous solution. The two liquids, water and methanol, mix with one another. And we see one phase or one continuous layer of liquid when these two are mixed. Because they mix up to form a liquid-liquid solution, water and methanol are called miscible. They're able to be mixed with one another. In construction of the chemical rainbow, we need to place immiscible liquids next to one another so that they won't interpenetrate and the lighter liquid will sit on top of the heavier liquid. And speaking of lighter and heavier, we really need to address this question of density for liquid phases that are immiscible in one another. You probably know from practical experience that when we take two liquids that are immiscible in one another with strong density differences, the less dense liquid sits on top of the more dense liquid. You'll see this, for example, if you mix oil and water together in a test tube. The reason for this is for the most part a question of physics, but I do want to address the question of what happens if we start with the less dense substance on the bottom and we add the more dense substance on top. In this case, the more dense substance is exerting a net downward pressure on the less dense substance. And so over time, the more dense substance will move towards the bottom of the test tube and the less dense substance will move upward, getting us back to the situation that we see on the left. But if the density differences are not very large, we might end up with another, arguably worse, situation in which the more dense liquid forms little droplets within the less dense liquid, and we end up with a messy emulsion. Now let's discuss what your exact mission will be during the Rainbow Lab experiment. You'll start with six solutions with the unknown codes that you see here, and the goal is to construct a layered mixture of these six solutions such that there are six independent layers sitting one on top of the other that are colored with red, orange, yellow, green, blue, and violet dyes to form a rainbow. Now, as we discussed previously, for two layers to sit on top of one another without intermixing, the adjacent layers have to be immiscible. So red has to be immiscible with orange, orange with yellow, yellow with green, etc. But note that the red and the yellow layers could be miscible with one another for example. Layers that are not right next to each other do not have to be immiscible. The other thing to note 
is that the substances need to go from most dense at the bottom to least dense at the top. If they don't go in this order, then the top layer will sink down after initial construction of the rainbow to the place where it wants to be in terms of the density gradient that gets set up. To figure out which of these six substances needs to be in each particular position, we need to first start with miscibility tests to figure out which liquids are miscible and immiscible with one another. So the idea of these tests is to pick two liquids, place small amounts of them into a test tube, and then look for the formation of one continuous liquid-liquid solution or two distinct layers. While doing these miscibility tests, when you come across mixtures that form two layers, you'll want to consider their relative density and examine which solution is sitting on top. So for example, if we mix the EAC and the DIW solutions, we would see that DIW would sit on the bottom and EAC would sit on the top, indicating that the DIW is the more dense solution and the EAC the less dense solution. So the key question here is how do the liquids layer? Record detailed notes in your lab notebook as you perform these miscibility and relative density tests because you're going to put that information together to carefully construct the chemical rainbow. Once you've got the results of the test, you'll be able to slowly pipette them into a test tube to form the rainbow. Careful addition of each layer is key because we do not want one of the upper layers to interpenetrate one of the lower layers with which it might be miscible. 